Hello guys and welcome back to Phoenix Wright, Ace Attorney, Justice for All. In the last episode, if you don't remember, this stuff went off the rails. Uh, we were this close to pinning the crime on Adrian, which would be absolutely horrible. And then Edgeworth jumped in and, you know, we were like, oh hey, maybe that suicide note is faked. And then Gumshoe failed at uh, saving Maya because he let the killer get away on accident. And then he grabbed a few pieces of evidence, and then he drove, he tried to drive over the courtroom. He got in an accident, and now we have to hope that Francisca can find him, get all of those pieces of evidence. Meanwhile, Edgeworth and Phoenix are still stalling for time. There's so much going on. So I'm pretty sure this will be the finale of the entire series. So without further ado, let's jump into this. Court will now reconvene. I assume both sides are ready. Y yes Your Honor. Y yes Your Honor. I can understand the defense acting like this. However, why do you also seem distraught, Mr. Edgeworth? I... that is... It's nothing, Your Honor. What's wrong with Edgeworth? It looks like something unexpected just happened to him. Now then, Mr. Edgeworth, if you could please tell the court the results of the... Handwriting analysis on Miss Impact's suicide note. Yes, Your Honor. Unfortunately, we've discovered that the suicide note is a forgery. What? What do you mean, Mr. Edgeworth? This this note was not written by Miss Impact herself. It is a fake. Order, order, order! Mr. Edgeworth, would you care to explain what is going on? If this was not written by Miss Impax, then who wrote it? We would need more time to do a more detailed analysis. However, it appears that the handwriting matches that of the victim, Mr. Juan Corita. M Mr. C Corita? Well, well. It looks like Miss Impax never left a suicide note after all. She never wrote anything about on guard. However, Your Honor, even though this suicide note is indeed a fake, Mr. Ungard could not have known that, and so that fact remains unchanged. Acting under the assumption that it was real, he had plotted to possess it. Hmm, that does sound very plausible. This theory that Ungard had no idea that the suicide note was fake. Something seems a little wrong with it. Let's present some evidence. The defense believes that the theory the prosecution has stated contradicts testimony. If everything the prosecution has proven up to this point is true, and it's, a, it's impossible for Mr. Ungard to not have known it was a fake. If you'll remember, previously we were talking about, Regworth was talking about how, um, well, obviously, Ungard knew where the, th where the suicide note was because he had the cameras installed. So, duh, duh obviously. But now we can throw that back at him because, obviously, if Ungard was spying on Karita, he would have seen him write down the fake suicide note. What is this little item called again? Um, a video camera, Your Honor. Well, a very small one, but... Oh, that's right, a camera. Ah, so you... Ah, you kids and your fancy toys nowadays. Mr. Edgeworth, earlier you claimed that Mr. Rengard knew of the existence of this note. Because he was spying on the victim, isn't that right? If that were true... And this means Mr. Rengard would have known that the victim had forged the note. Ah! So then, the defendant knew this suicide note was a fake, and if that's true, then the situation has suddenly changed into in a very dramatic way. Exactly, Your Honor. The prosecution's theory as to what Mr. Engard's motive for murder was, it has suddenly disappeared into thin air. But, Your Honor, it's not as if Mr. Engard monitored Mr. Corita 24 hours a day. Perhaps the victim wrote the note in a place Mr. Engard didn't know of. Well, right back at you, Mr. Edgeworth. Why don't you show us some proof that the victim made the forgery at an, at an unknown place? <laughs> order! 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 Mr. Edgeworth! It looks like this time it is you who has dug his own grave. <laughs> As I figured. Huh? As you figured. As I figured, it came down to this after all. Mr. Edgeworth, you are not making any sense. 
When I heard the results of the handwriting analysis, I thought this might happen. The question is, what next? What next? If the prosecution can't prove Mr. Ungard's motive through the evidence, then we must prove from another angle. Well, I agree with you there. Your Honor, the prosecution would like to call a witness to the stand at this time. Oh, well that's fine. However, this witness... This witness is a little... unusual. It's worth stuttering. This is not like him at all. Unusual? Well, what sort of witness is this person, Mr. Wright? Er, Mr. Edgeworth? This witness is one who is perfectly fit to answer once and for all answer the question of who was it that hired Shelley to kill her to commit the murder? That's impossible! Who in the- No such person exists who can answer the question with such certainty. Y yes, Mr. Edgeworth. Who is this witness? It is... it's... um... Yes, go on. Who is it? The man himself. Mr. Shelley DeKiller. Oh, Mr. DeKiller. Wait! Shelley DeKiller! Um... You mean... The killer? Or, I mean, the assassin? Yes, Your Honor. He's coming here? To the witness stand? Well, yes, in a matter in a manner of speaking. I recognize that this is a very unusual circumstance, so I ask you for permission. Hmm. Well, Mr. Wright? Yes? Is it is this all right with you? Do I have a choice here? Can't really do much else to drag this trial out. The defense has no objections, Your Honor. I wonder if it really is all right to do this. Very well then. The prosecution calls our witness to the stand. Edgeworth, is there no other way left to us? Now then, witness. Um, your name and your, uh, occupation, please. Very good, sir. My name is Shelley DeKiller, and I am an appre- and I am a professional assassin. I- I say, what is going on here? Your Honor. How can you remain so calm? What is the meaning of this two-way radio? Actually, Your Honor, it was delivered to me just now, and it came with a condition. As long as we do not trace its source, Mr. DeKiller will testify to the court. So this must be what that urgent phone call he got earlier was about. Oh no, this will not do. I cannot allow this in my court. First of all, we can't even be sure this is really Mr. DeKiller himself. Witness, Please present some sort of proof that you're in fact Shelley to kill her. I understand. Please wait a second. I'm so hungry. Maya! Maya! A voice! Mr. Wright, can you confirm anything from this? The defense has no objections to this person. We are satisfied that this man is, is indeed Shelley to kill her. Looks like we have run into yet another unexpected turn of events. Well, it doesn't seem like we have too many choices under these circumstances, so... Now then, witness. There is one thing I would like to confirm before we speak of anything else. And what would that be? At the request of a client, you killed Mr. Juan Corita. Is this correct? It is as you say. I did indeed kill Mr. Corita. Now that we've answered that question, let's move on to the name of your client. Very well. This is all just a bad dream. Yes, that's it, a bad dream. Shelley the Killer. What is he going to say? The fourth case of the first game, we cross-examined a parrot. In the second case, in the fourth case of the second game, we cross-examined a, a radio. There is something I must first state. To an assassin, nothing is more important than the trust between a client and himself. And that is the reason I am here today on this witness stand. It is my wish that you grasp this concept before I give the name of my client. Hmm, Mr. De Killer seems to be a very clever man. I'd almost say he seems to be mocking us. Well, he may appear to be our enemy, Your Honor. Mr. DeKiller is only stating the truth. 
He was no hypocrite. He has always stood by this one belief. You mean about this trust between his client and himself thing? Hmm. It seems to be a level of trust beyond what people like me can comprehend. Well, Mr. Wright, are you ready to cross-examine the witness? Yes, Your Honor. There's no way to know what's there's no way to know what's coming next, so stay cool and collected, Phoenix. So here's another uh, weird one. I'll just go ahead and press through everything first, and then we'll get to what makes this so weird. We can hear anything you have to say later. Can you please just tell us your clients? I don't think you understand your place, Mr. Attorney. I said this is something I must first state. Do you know what the word first means? S sorry, go on. Well, it appears this is one witness you can't badger, Mr. Wright. It's only because you don't know about my situation. To an assassin, nothing is more important than the trust between a client and himself. The trust between you and your client. I provide my services in a fast and efficient manner. In exchange, I trust that my clients are discreet about me and my identity. If too many people knew my face, it would be quite troublesome. That's why you're testifying in this manner. This is the first This is the first time one of my clients has ever been accused of murder. I must preserve the killer name so my clients can trust me. But couldn't someone stab you in the back and break your trust? It has never happened before, but if it ever did... Y yes That person wouldn't be my client for very long. They would, they would certainly... That's enough! Please, no more! Very well. It was only a hypothetical, anyway. And that is the reason I am here today on this witness stand. It seems a little strange to me. I mean, you're about to tell us the name of your client. I would think that this would be very bad for them. It doesn't matter to me. This client has already broken the rules and acted outside of their prescribed role. Their role? The person tried to implicate another of the crime in order to save themselves. And this is a trespass that cannot be forgiven. You. Who gave you the right to be so high and mighty? To the gentleman who spoke just now, excuse me, but would you care to die? Uh, ah, no, no, I, I didn't say anything. The judge had better watch himself. It is my wish that you grasp the concept before I give the name of my client. We understand, so please just tell us the name of your client. I'm afraid I cannot do that. I still have a few things I... I still have a few things to say before I do. Ah, egomaniacal. It's not good for your health to be so aggravated. You won't live very long if you let everything bother you. Somehow, that coming from an assassin makes it less than comforting. I don't really care about all this extra fluff. Just tell us the name already. Patience. Try to calm down a little. It's important to try and understand his mindset. He seems very steadfast and closed, so you're going to have to work to get to him. But I'm not his therapist, you know? <laughs> so here's another weird one. First you need to press Statement 2, then Statement 3, and then finally go back and press Statement 2 again. Trust between you and your client. I provide my services in a fast and efficient manner. In exchange, I trust that my clients are discreet about me and my identity. There are roles and duties an assassin and his client are to carry out. I'm sorry, but I was wondering about something you just said. You said that your client had already broken the rules. A person who frames another is the worst kind of human. And that's why you feel you can betray this person? I have no trust relation with a client that can't understand their assigned role. Just my luck. An assassin with a conscience. Who would have figured? Now then, everyone. Do you think you can understand my logic? This case just keeps getting better and better. If you can't, then I'm afraid we can't proceed. Everyone understands your point, I think. Really. In that case, I believe I am prepared to disclose the information you seek. You've made it crystal clear that you value trust over all else, 
I believe we are ready. Excellent. And that is the reason I am here today on the witness stand. Now then, I do believe it's about time I revealed the name of my client, don't you agree? What is it? Um, now I can't bring myself to ask the client's name. If you can't ask it, Mr. Wright, then I will. Witness. What is the name of your client who requested the murder of Mr. Juan Corrida? That person's name is... Adrian Andrews. What? 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 Witness! That's not who you told me it was earlier. Pray tell, what are you talking about, Mr. Prosecutor? I should think I know my own client. It is Adrian Andrews. What? This can't be! On the phone earlier! What's going on here? My guess is that Mr. DeKiller just stabbed Mr. Edgeworth in the back. Stabbed Mr. Edgeworth in the back? I'm sure in order to get an audience with this court, Mr. DeKiller told him a different name. Mad on guard, perhaps. I knew it. This... This is outrageous! I was deceived! This witness is telling a very serious lie. But you are the one who summoned this witness. <laughs> Ugh. You... Shelly to kill her. My testimony is the truth. The defendant at the moment is mad on guard, am I correct? All I wish to do is help procure his acquittal. <laughs> hmm. Wow. All of a sudden it feels like we can actually win this. Yeah. The prosecution has failed to provide a motive and is instead provided the suicide note, which is a forgery created by the victim. Furthermore, there is a possibility that the defendant himself knew it was a fake. But most definitive of all, we have heard from the assassin himself, the name of his client. Mr. DeKiller's client who requested the murder was not the defendant at all. N no With all this evidence, it is obvious to me that this means that Mr. Matt Ungard is innocent. I seem to have caused you all a bit of confusion. Please, continue your discussion, and call me when you have reached a verdict. Bailiff, please bring Miss Adrian Andrews in immediately. What now? With the way this is going, Unguard will be found innocent. This may be our last chance to save Maya. Yeah. But... But Edgeworth is right! The killer is lying! And on guard, my client, I know he's guilty. Can I live with myself if I win this? Who would have believed that the prosecution's own witness would absolve the defendant? Your Honor, the prosecution requests permission to further question the witness. Shelley DeKiller is certainly lying under oath. Hmm. It wasn't me. Listen, everyone here, please. That testimony just now it was all one big lie. Miss Andrews, the suicide note may have been a fake, but that man, Matt, he's the reason Celeste died, and Juan's death was all because he got pulled into Matt's twisted world. That testimony just now, you have to believe me, it was a horrible, horrible lie. But Mr. DeKiller himself has testified. He has named you as his client. No, that's not true. Also, there's quite a bit of evidence that points to you. The knife and the button, donning the Nickel Samurai's costume. But, but that's... That's... You even have a motive. We know that Miss Celeste Impax was a large part of your life. You wanted to follow her, and you wanted revenge against the two who hurt her. I would say you have plenty of reasons to want them both dead. I... I... No, Mr. Wright! You, you know the truth. Tell them, tell them the real story, who the real killer is. Tell them, please, help me. 
Yes, I know the truth. Mr. Wright. Yes, Your Honor. I believe we have reached the end of this trial. Therefore, I ask the defense for any final words or opinions. I have to decide. Do I take the not guilty verdict and save Maya? Or do I throw this chance away and wait for Gumshoe's new evidence? What am I supposed to do? Phoenix. I can't do it, Mia. I can't accept a not guilty. You are a lawyer. I know. But... But Madame Guard is a killer. A murderer. I can't. I can't let him get away with this. I can't let someone else take the fall. If I let Miss Andrews be convicted, then I'm no better than on guard. And even though I don't want to admit it, I have to face the fact that it is because of Edgeworth that I now know the real truth. He could have gotten on guard convicted so many times over, but he never took a single one of those chances. If I take this verdict right now, I'd be betraying his trust. His trust? Never thought about it until now. I... I trust him? Yes, you do. Mr. Wright, your opinion, please. The defense requests that we be allowed to further question Mr. DeKiller. Am I hearing you correctly, Mr. Wright? Right. But... But... That witness has cleared your client through his testimony. Your job here is done. I'm not done yet. To see through this witness's lies and find the truth. That is my job, Your Honor. There's still more evidence to look at. And I'm sure that one, once those pieces arrive here in this very courtroom, a miracle will occur. Very well. The trial will continue. Mr. Edgeworth, please re-establish connection with Mr. DeKiller. Right away, Your Honor. Has the verdict been reached? Before that, we would like to talk with you a little more. About? All you need from me was the name of my client. What else could you need me for? Well, actually, we would like to hear everything you know about this case. That is how things are. Usually done. What is he talking about? Usually done? But, what shall we have him testify about now? Mr. DeKiller, if you don't mind, please testify about your client in more detail. You legal people and your procedures. Is it any wonder no one likes to go to court? As I've already stated quite a few times, Adrian Andrews is my client. However, one thing I simply cannot overlook is tampering with the scene of the crime. My client did, did it to frame another for the crime, while pretending to be the first person to discover the body and enter the scene. Adrian Andrews already knew from the very beginning that one corridor was dead. But even more appalling is the creation and planting of the button and knife. That act is what I was referring to when I said my client had broken the rules. Hmm. This is a most unexpected turn of events. For the, um, fifth time now? However, this time, everything has finally been revealed. Just a second, Your Honor. Yes, Mr. Edgeworth? We still have the cross-examination to do. But you don't need to question testimony like this. Do you, Mr. Wright? Your Honor, the defense will question the witness. As if I have a choice here. Huh? Why? What is this witness? What this witness has said is nothing but beneficial to the defense's case. If you scrutinize the testimony, then, then I'll expose the lies in that oh-so-beneficial testimony. I suppose. I don't understand what's going on anymore. That makes two of us. So this one is a simple contradiction uh, that I'll get into get to in just a second. What is it, Mr. Wright? If I press him the wrong way, it might raise suspicions on his end. But I have to do something to waste more time. 
Um, witness, about requesting a hit. Yes. How much is your fee? I see you are also quite a dark-hearted man, Mr. Attorney. Huh? If you would like to talk business, we can do so after the trial. Ah, no, 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 no. I, I, I'm not thinking of hiring... Uh, Mr. Wright. Y yes? You, y you... You want to kill me. You want me dead, don't you? What? Why would you think something like that? Like that, you run Guilty. Mr. Phoenix Wright, you are hereby declared guilty. <sighs> Witness, let's continue. Why did you just close the name of your client? They are your client, are they not? The thing I simply cannot overlook is tampering with the scene of the crime. I would think that most people wouldn't be able to overlook a person hiring another to kill. If I had a problem with such a thing, I wouldn't be very efficient, effective at my job. <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, a change in occupation might be good for you. However, I will say this. Even though I am the one that does the deed, my clients are always the real guilty party. That goes without saying, Mr. Dickiller. And their fate is to live with the knowledge of their guilt on their shoulders. However, my clients this time thought that they could run from their guilt. When a client did it to frame another for the crime. Are you talking about the button and the knife? Yes, and my business card. Oh, this card. So that no one has to waste their time, including the police. I always make it a point to make things as easy as possible. You try to make things easy? My business card makes it very easy to identify who carried out the service. He's pretty devoted to his work. But to disregard everything, to go and stab the deceased with a knife and even hide my card from sight. That is something I cannot overlook. Hmm. It's really hard to tell if he's being truthful or not without him being here. Pretending to be the first person to discover the body and enter the scene. So you're saying that most clients wouldn't do such a thing? That is correct. Usually most people try to create an alibi for themselves. If you should use my services, Mr. Attorney, I should suggest you plan your alibi, too. Uh, no, I already told you. I have no intention of ever using your services. Why does he keep looking at me like I'm the one on trial here? And Andrews already knew from the very beginning that Juan Carita was dead. From the very beginning? That is correct. From before my client visited the room. All of my clients know precisely what the situation is at all times. I wonder if that's really true. That's odd. Even more appalling increase in planning of the knife and the button. So why do you think your client did that? What do you mean by why? Well, fittingly around at the scene of the crime is pretty risky. Why do you think someone who's requested a murder go to the crime scene anyway? Hmm, that is true. I assume it was probably done to frame Mr. and God. If that's the case, then why didn't the person just request that you do it? Sadly, that's not possible. Huh? My job is to kill. That is all. And to leave my business card behind, naturally. The business card is so my clients may escape blame. To protect them is my duty. Hmm. Even if they say it's for revenge, setting someone else up to take your fall. That is what I was referring to when I said my client had broken the rules. And that's all you have to testify. Yes, and I pray, and I pray, and I pray that I will never be called to the stand again. Again? Is any plan to continue? I must. So I have yet to find a person to take my place and become the fourth successor. Actually, how would you like a new life, Mr. Attorney? Excuse me? Uh, no, 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 I'm fine. Really? Are you really now? I wonder what kind of man the judge thinks I am now. What are you going to do now, Phoenix? All I can do now is expose the lies. 
That's true. However, you realize that that will be very bad for our client, right? Mm -hmm. I'm so confused. But the one thing I know for sure is that I can't let this trial end yet. I would love to see fan art of Phoenix actually taking up the Dekiller mantle. So the problem we have here is Adrian Andrews already knew from the very beginning that Juan Carita was dead. However, that actually contradicts the evidence here... The wine glass. Objection! Thank you so much for taking the time to testify, Mr. DeKiller. What is the meaning of that attitude? When Adrian Andrews entered the victim's room... Your client had no idea that Juan Carita had been murdered. But how... how do you know that? From this wine glass, Your Honor. The glass. Mr. DeKiller's supposed client thought Mr. Corita had only fainted, which is why this glass of tomato juice was poured from the victim. Hmm, but isn't that just a part of Adrian Andrews' calculated plan? That is not possible, Your Honor. This glass bears the fingerprints of that person. Had this been planned, they would have never left their fingerprints behind. Now, I see your point, Mr. Edgeworth. What is your opinion? Strangely enough, I had the same exact thoughts just now. Witness, how do you explain this strange phenomenon? Isn't it a waste of time to ask about such a minor detail? It's not a very important point anyway, correct? I'm afraid you are mistaken. If Adrian Andrews really is your client, as you claim, then your client should have had knowledge of Mr. Correa's death. If not, and that can only mean that Adrian Andrews was never your client at all. How strange. Yes? Why is it that the attorney is yet to raise an objection at this absurd situation? Phoenix, if the killer figures out what we're up to, we're in real trouble. Yeah, I know. Objection. Mr. Edgeworth, I'm surprised. You know you can't say things like that without any evidence. Oh, sorry. That sounded like an awfully weak objection to me. Anyway, I'm positive that there was a contradiction in that testimony. The prosecution requires further testimony concerning when the request was taken. Very well. Right now I have to buy us more time. While we wait for the items the killer left behind to get here. I just know that the very outcome of this trial lies with those items. This request came to me... Oh, about a week ago. It was a request for my services on the night of the awards ceremony. We met at a certain bar to discuss and finalize a few matters. That is what is... That is what occurred. I trust my memory, and I believe I have made no mistakes. Hmm, so you physically met your client, huh? That is correct. Meeting one's client is the first step to building trust, in my opinion. I see. Well, Mr. Wright, your cross-examination, please. Okay, first statement. One week ago. Are you sure? Yes, I am quite sure. I, of course, had my own preparations. And I was barely able to finish. When you request my services, Mr. Attorney, I hope you will keep that in mind. Please, stop. In any case, my client this time had a very specific date and time in mind. A specific date and time? The request for my services on the night of the award ceremony. Did you ask why on that specific night? No. I tried to fulfill all the conditions of my client's request. But as for why, I only had my suspicions. Your suspicions, huh? Let's press further. So what are these suspicions you had? Why did your client request that night? I'm sure it was all for the bear. The bear? My client spoke of it. I'm sure there will be a bear-shaped figurine in one corridor's room. I'd like for you to retrieve that item for me. 
You must be talking about this bear puzzle. <laughs> Inside that figurine was a suicide note. Naturally, the victim brought it with him to the hotel room. He was planning on public he was planning to publicly disclose its contents at the press conference after all. That is correct. And if I had not done the job that night, it would not have known I would not have known where the bear figurine was. I see. Well, Mr. Wright, was the testimony just now of any importance? I'm going to say it was very important. The testimony just now has made one thing clear. That it is... The client knew the secret of the bear figurine. Huh? Why is everyone so quiet? Mr. Wright, I think all of us already knew that. Uh, oh, really? Witness, please continue with your testimony. We're gonna wrap around to that one later, because there's something else we can do there. We met at a certain bar to discuss and finalize a few matters. So you physically met Adrian Andrews, right? Of course I did. What was that? What was with the brief pause? Witness, I would like for you to give us a few more details. I always meet my clients at a, as a matter of principle. I have never taken a request by telephone or mail. And why is that? That's because I value trust between a client and myself above all else. And the only way to establish that is to speak to the client while looking them in the eye. Hmm. Well, Mr. Wright, was the testimony just now of any importance? I'm going to say it was very important. Of course it was very important, Your Honor. If Mr. DeKiller had met his client before the murder, then it's unlikely he is mistaken. Hmm. So you're saying that his client really was Adrian Andrews? Uh, um, I guess so? You see, it is just as I said. Hmm. <laughs> I'm so lost. Who the heck am I supposed to be helping here? Calm down, Phoenix. Think carefully and relax. Now then, would the witness please continue? This is what occurred. I trust my memory and I believe I've made no mistakes. So your client was Adrian Andrews. That is correct. Well, he says the two of them met. But if they did, then there shouldn't be anything wrong with the killer's testimony. Well, there doesn't seem to be anything strange this time around. You have to draw more information from him, but you can't draw his suspicion. If you can do that, you should be able to find a flaw in his testimony somewhere. Talk about a delicate balance. So the solution here is to press this statement again. We need to press further. He always t looks them in the eye. Now we have to say it was not important. Why he meets his clients is not important, and that wasn't the point. Witness, please stop s sidestepping my questions. What do you mean by that? My question was, did you really meet Adrian Andrews in person? I have already told you, Mr. Wright. I did. It was only through talking with him face to face that I began to trust him. That's when I thought, I can trust this person as a client. Hmm. It's true what they say about talking face to face. Well, Mr. Wright, was the testimony just now of any importance? Now that, you could probably see right off the bat, was very important. If I heard what I think I heard just now, then I think I've got him. Your Honor, I believe the testimony just now was of the utmost importance. Huh? Really? If that's the case... Witness, please include this statement just now in your testimony. Very well. The moment I saw him, I thought, I can trust this person as a client. I actually wonder what happens if you press this statement. But as we now know, that was not how it turned out, correct? What do you mean? Adrian Andrews turned out to be a client who couldn't stick to the rules, right? Well, yes. I suppose you are correct. Hmm. So I would like to check one last time. Are you sure your testimony is accurate? So, not too much there. You could probably notice the contradiction right away. The killer says him. 
but Adrian Andrews is a her. I'd like to go over this one more time. I met Adrian, he met Adrian Andrews at a bar and took the request at that time. Yes, that is correct. And that's when you thought he was trustworthy. How many times must I repeat myself? Yes, that is correct. I'm sorry, but that is an impossible tale. Wh what? Shelly the Killer. You've never met the real Adrian Andrews. <laughs> Why would you say that? Because you made one very big slip up. About her. So what is the issue? <laughs> what did you just say just now? About... her? If you had ever met Adrian Andrews in person, one look would have told you that she is a woman. <laughs> Order. Order in the court. Mr. Wright, what is the meaning of this? This witness testified to the following. That he always meets face to face with clients when taking their requests. But he has never met Adrian Andrews in person. Yes, Your Honor. That is exactly the point. That means Mr. Dekiller's client could not have been Miss An Adrian Andrews. <clears throat> Love that he's sweating oil. It's so weird and gross, but it's funny. Mr. Edgeworth, I understand your logic on this one. However, why would the assassin make such a basic mistake? I believe it has to do with her name, Your Honor. Her name? Yes, Adrian Andrews is without a doubt a very androgynous, androgynous name. Hmm, yes, I see. And luckily for Mr. DeKiller, the entire time he was on the stand, no one had stated Adrian Andrews' as gender. And so he simply picked the wrong gender to go with. Uh, what? What is going on? Shelley DeKiller. This court demands an explanation. Mm hmm. I think somehow I must have mixed up this client with another. So does that mean you remember something different now? Yes, of course. Please, if you would allow me to testify once more. Ugh, I know he's just going to spit out more lies. Very well, but this time please give us the truth and nothing but the truth. Yes, now I remember. I took that request by mail. There have been times when I took a job without having met my client. The, the request was for the murder of one courier and two or three other small things. When I saw the name at the end of the letter, I thought my client to be a man. Hmm, so you took this job through a letter. He didn't mention anything about a letter in this earlier testimony, which means he's definitely lying. Be careful, Phoenix. If you break the assassin's testimony completely, it's over for us. I know. I can't make him suspicious, but... I think we're okay. Like, we can do this. As long as he's standing there across from me. No matter how strong of a punch I throw, he'll counter it. Now then, let's begin the cross-examination. Okay. I'm pretty sure this is, ac this is actually the final testimony in the game. So this is huge. Let's get right into this. But didn't you just say that you always meet your clients? Yes, I suppose I did say that. However, there are some clients for whom a meeting is simply not possible. But didn't you meet your client this time? No, I did not. Oh, come now. Let's stop with this game of cat and mouse. Using your silkiest voice is not going to work on me. Alright then, just cough it up and confess! Mr. Wright, you can't badger a witness with such harsh words. Um... You're a lawyer, so behave like one and present evidence instead of mindlessly yelling. Now then, do you have any proof that Mr. DeKiller met with his client? We don't, actually. I'm sorry, Your Honor. Unfortunately, I don't have any proof. Hmm, I see. And your line of questioning was just another waste of time. Sadly for us, Your Honor, that is the nature of right and wrong. 
There have been times when I took a job without having met my client. And why would you not meet certain clients? Recently, recently I've been receiving more requests. If I met each and every client, I would lose some nice business opportunities. Nice business opportunities? On top of which, the times have changed. It is now the age of information and computers, correct? Well, I have joined these times. I now take requests via electronic mail. Electronic mail? Do you have to mail that in a special insulated envelope? Oh, I'm very sorry. I despise the shortening of words. What I meant by electronic mail is what is commonly referred to as email. Email? In a contest of mimicry, the judge would beat a parrot, hands down. Hmm. <laughs> anyway, so. Anyway, so you took this job without having met your client, and. The request was for the murder of one Corita, and two or three other small things. Two or three other things? Yes. And what were these other things? A few other things that have nothing to do with this case. Hmm. What should I do? Should I let him slide with that? It'd be really bad if I push his buttons the wrong way and he gets mad. Let's press further. Whether or not they're related to this case is for the court to decide. Mr. Attorney. Y yes? Everything I've said from the beginning has been nothing but beneficial to your client. Which is why I have to wonder what is pushing you to continue with this cross-examination. Could it be that you are planning to betray your own client? That's... I smell the stench of a backstabber. And should you turn out to be one? Wait! Uh-oh. This is looking really bad. I shouldn't press my luck. Alright, I have to think. Is this worth pursuing? Press further. Witness, this is a very important matter. Please cooperate and tell us what these other jobs your client requested were. If it's truly that important, I suppose I don't have much of a choice. The bear figurine. The bear figurine? After the assassination of a target, I was to find that figurine, and I was told that this job was just as important as the actual killing. And... where was that figurine? It was inside Mr. Corita's, Corita's suitcase. And then, what did you do next? I handed it over to my client right away. You gave it to your clients? Interesting. Hmm, this information certainly sounds important to me. Witness, please include what you just stated in your testimony. As you wish. One of the one of these was to find the bear figurine and to give it to Adrian Andrews. So there's actually something interesting with the statement, but we're gonna continue pressing for now, and then we'll wrap around back to this in just a sec. <clears throat> I found this figurine at Mr. Engard's mansion. If you gave it to Miss Andrews, then what was it doing there? It was waiting for her there. That was also part of the plan to frame Mr. and God, I'm sure. Hmm, that makes a lot of sense. Well, Mr. Wright, do you have any problems with this piece of testimony? No objections. It's no use. So long as I can't put my finger on the central problem here, pressing this witness anymore would be extremely dangerous. Hmm, it appears that Mr. Wright has no problems. Well then, witness, Please continue. When I saw the name at the end of the letter, I thought my client to be a man. So you're saying that you never saw your client's face? Not even once? I did. Once. It was when I went to give my client the figurine. Hmm, yes, I see. But Miss Andrews was wearing a mask at the time. A mask? The Nickel Samurai mask, I'm guessing. Hmm, Mr. Wright, what do you have to say about this? Do you have any problems with this piece of testimony? No objections. I think I can pull something out of what he said. But it would be real bad if I did something and made him mad over something trivial. There are no problems with the testimony, Your Honor. Hmm. 
We've got pretty- we've pretty much reached the end of our rope here. Huh? Seems like we're still okay to me. And that's exactly what is so bad. At the- at the rate we're going, we'll end up completely destroying the killer's lie. If we do that, you already know how serious of a situation that'll put us in. Uh, oh, yeah. All I can do now is pray that those items reach us in time. Alright, here's a major contradiction. Uh, first you have to press this statement, continue to press further, and you'll get this new statement about giving the bear figurine to Adrian Andrews. The thing that we want to present here is the figurine. Shelly the Killer. If you'd really given the bear to Miss Andrews, then this item should not have been inside. This item. I see where you're going. Yep, that's where I'm going. Where's everyone going? Do I need to pack a suitcase? Your Honor, please think back to Miss Andrews' testimony. And I was going to burn it, for her sake. If even for a single minute, this bear had actually been in Miss Andrews' hands, I'm sure she would have taken the suicide note out and burned it. Order! 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 So that's where you, were, you two were going. So by the very fact that the suicide note was inside the bear, tells us that your client didn't know how to disassemble the puzzle. Which means? It means, Your Honor, that it is impossible for Adrian Andrews to have been the client. Oh! Order! 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 <laughs> Mr. Phoenix Wright. I... I'm sure I mentioned this before. How I hate traitors above all else. I think your cross-examination has clearly demonstrated something to me. You... you must wish to break... your end of our agreement. N no that's not... That's enough. If that is your intention, then there is only one thing for me to do. W wait Please! Gentlemen, ladies, please excuse me. I have a matter that I must attend to. N no! Please! Not that! Please wait! Mr. Attorney, bring this trial to a speedy end, and I may stay my hand. Otherwise... What in the... Mr. Wright, are you... Mr. Edgeworth? Yes, Your Honor? I didn't understand this witness's outburst just now. Do you think there's a need to hear more testimony, or is this enough? Well, we should... Edgeworth, we can't do this. If we keep this up, my... She'll... The prosecution... I... What has come over, everyone? Even you are... The prosecution... Rests. What is going on around here? The prosecution has no further questions, Your Honor. What? Well, I never thought I'd see the day. This is a most unusual situation. If the prosecution rests with no further questions, then the prosecution has failed to uphold its stance. If that is the case, then even though I am reluctant, I must believe that Mr. DeKiller's testimony is accurate. That would mean that Shelley DeKiller's client is Adrian Andrews. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mr. Wright. Yes, Your Honor? I end the trial here, right now. And your client, Matt on guard, would be declared innocent. And in his place, Adrian Andrews would be charged with murder. Miss Andrews would be charged with murder. The prosecution has no further questions, so we will now hear the defense's final remarks. Bailiff, please bring the defendant, Matt on guard, to the stand. The items from the killer's hideout didn't make it in time. We tried as hard as we could. But it looks like our time has run out. I can't believe it. 
uh, the outcome lies in your hand. Dude, did the old guy finally decide? To be honest, I can't think of you as a truly innocent and good person. You've done enough evil to drive a woman to suicide. But, at least on the charge of murder, it would appear you are innocent. <laughs> so, I guess even the old fuddy-duddy figured me out. Mr. Rengard? You were atrocious as a lawyer, weren't you? Giving your client, giving your client away like this. And that refreshing like a spring breeze crap. It's just atrocious, don't you? Don't you agree? Anyway, get on with it and pronounce me innocent already. Right, Mr. Lawyer? Should I side with justice? Or should I save Maya's life? You better get on guard a guilty sentence, okay? But... But if I did that, Maya will die! But if I say he's innocent, then Miss Andrews will be charged as the murderer. Do I say he's guilty? Or not guilty? Either choice I make, someone's life is going to end. It all hinges on what I choose. Now then, Mr. Wright. Let's hear the defense's final statements on this matter. If the person who hired the assassin was Adrian Andrews, then your client, Mr. Matt Ungard, is innocent. <laughs> There's no need to ask, old man. After all, my lawyer is going to say what I want, aren't you? Right. I can't. I can't do this. But I have to decide something. I can't count on the evidence to help me anymore. I have to listen to my heart. My client, Matt Ungard, is... We are waiting for your answer, Mr. Wright. Matt Ungard, your client deserves an answer. Maya... I'm sorry. Madden Guard is... Objection! Francisca Von Karma! Uh, what are you doing- Ow! You see now, don't you, Mr. Phoenix Wright? This is exactly why you should never take your eyes off that scruffy fool. Did you bring them? The final pieces. Do you have them? You should know better than to ask that, Mr. Miles Edgeverse. The Von Karma is perfect in every way. The evidence in here is in perfect con condition. Don't worry about Scruffy. He's fine, and his injuries are minor. All of the items are inside of this. What a filthy old coat this is. That's gum shoes. I can spot his tattered rags from, from anywhere. I apologize for its ugly ugliness, but there was nothing else to wrap the items in. I fought long and hard this whole trial. All for what is inside that raggedy coat. I'm sure that inside that coat lies a crucial piece of evidence. Your Honor, inside that filthy coat are the defense's final pieces of evidence. Your final... evidence? This trial is already over. All that remains is for me to hand down my verdict. I do not believe that any evidence presented now would change the outcome of this trial. Wh what? Your Honor, it, are, it is our duty to examine every piece of evidence down to the last. I request that Miss Von Karma be allowed to present these pieces of evidence. Hmm. I suppose you are right, Mr. Edgeworth. I grant permission to do so. However, this one obvious rule applies here. If these items do not bring up any new points, then they will not be accepted by this court. Now, Miss Von Karma, if you please, 
These pieces of evidence are items left by the killer during his escape from the police. Hmm. It must have been in quite a rush. Yes, Your Honor. The killer left three pieces of evidence. Somewhere among the evidence we're about to see, there will be something that will turn this whole situation around. Like a miracle. I'm sure of it. That is all we can hope for. The first item is a pistol. Does the killer's pistol have anything to do with this case? Let's question for more details. Does that pistol have any relation to this case? We have yet to perform a ballistics test, so I can't say anything for certain. However, I believe it has something to do with this case. At least to me. And that's the pistol he used to shoot you, isn't it? So that's what I believe, yes. Oh. I, I kept the bullet they removed from my shoulder as a sort of memento. I'm sure that it will be an excellent sample for the test. So that's the pistol that was used to shoot Francisca. It's probably not going to help us very much. There's a second piece of evidence in this videotape. I bet the killer took that from Unguard Mansion. I reject the contents of that tape. Unfortunately, there was no time to. Oh, yeah. But I would speculate that this tape is very important. Why would you say that? Because he came back to his hideout for it. D the killer went back for it? That's right. It looks like he was trying to recover it. He injured three of the officers at the site. Hmm. But somehow, it looks like they managed to protect it from the killer. Shelly the Killer is no ordinary man. The last piece of evidence is this bellboy's uniform. Is that a uniform from the Gatewater Hotel? Question for more details. Was that used during the crime? I'm almost certain it was. There's even a pair of black leather, go leather gloves in one of the pockets. There's no doubt about it. The killer was wearing this on the night of the murder. There is one thing I found interesting about this uniform. And what is that? There is a button missing from the uniform. A button? It's a, it's a very unique button. I'm sure if we were to recover it, it would provide us with an interesting clue. Hmm. So that is all I have to present, Your Honor. Hmm. It's just as I thought. And what is that, Your Honor? I'm sure where we under normal circumstances, these items from Shelley the Killer's hideout would be very important clues. However, our question is not who did the killing. It is who hired the client. Yes, that is correct. And these three items do not tell us anything about that. Thank you for your hard work, Miss Von Karma. You may step down now. Wait, Your Honor! Please allow me to examine this new evidence. Overruled. This court already has all the evidence it needs to hand down a verdict. Wonderful. Absolutely splendid. This judge is such a brilliant man, isn't he? Is this the end? Phoenix. I knew it. There's no such thing as a miracle in this world, is there? I think you're wrong. I think they do exist. But you have to make that miracle happen. You've come this far. You can't give up now. But... But... No matter how you think about it, it's... It's... Try. For my sake. Just think about it for a second. There are two ways out of the situation for us. T two? The first... Make on guard wish from the bottom of his soul for a guilty verdict. Huh? The killer will always place his client's wishes first. If on guard himself wishes to be convicted, then he will let his hostage go. Th that may be true, but... That's asking me to do the impossible. The second way. Force the killer to end his contract with on guard. If the killer were to no longer think of on guard as his client, then he would let Maya go. Mia, that's even more impossible. He's a man who values his duty towards his clients above all else. I know both of these seem like impossible feats at first, 
but if you could make either one happen, it would truly be a miracle. The bigger problem is, the judge has already said he doesn't need any more evidence. The pieces he was just shown, he's not accepting them. Phoenix, think things through from the other side. Isn't that what has always worked for us? The other side? Wait, does she mean... You mean, to turn things around? Phoenix, the judge says that he doesn't need the evidence. If that's the case, then who does need it? The person who needs the evidence. The defense, prosecution, and the judge. We've all seen the pieces of evidence. And that is how we have come to know the truth. But there are people who have not seen them all. And those people do not know the truth. That truth, it may be what will bring about the miracle in the end. There are no objections this time, correct? Now then, I will pronounce my verdict. Why don't we, we all respectfully sit back and listen, kids? I have already told you, Mr. Wright. This court does not need any more evidence. I'm not saying that it is us that needs the evidence, Your Honor. Then, you want to show this evidence to... that person? Yes, Your Honor. Please, Your Honor. Mr. Wright, for you to ask with such passion, I will grant you one chance. Ugh. One chance. Please show your evidence to who you think is the right person. That's impossible, to turn this situation around in one try. One try. That is all I will permit. I have to try to remember. Everything that has happened up to this point. Think, Phoenix. Think. There must be a way to save Maya while taking on guard down at the same time. Now then, Mr. Wright. Let's not waste any more time. Who would you like to show the evidence to? I see. And now, tell us the tell the court what one piece of evidence you would like to show this person. Well, what do you think, Mr. Edgeworth? Um, uh, um, I think there is some merit in showing this evidence to that witness. Bailiff, please bring in the transceiver from earlier. All right. Looks like they got a hold of him. Maya. She's okay, right? Didn't I tell you to concern yourself with bringing about a speedy end to this trial? Now, if I understand correctly, you wish to show me one piece of evidence. Yes, one is all I need. I, ha I have here a videotape. It was found at your hideout. I heard you injured three officers in your attempt to get this back. That was most regrettable. However, it was an order from my client. I was told to protect that videotape. I thought so. I'm afraid I have... I'm afraid I seem to have failed in that regard. Do you know the contents of this tape? I was sternly told by my client not to watch it. So I have absolutely no idea. Actually, you are on this tape. Me. There's a video camera hidden at the crime scene. Your actions were being recorded. What? Is that true, Mr. Wright? Who? Who was it that planted a camera? Well, the only person who could have placed a camera at the scene of the crime would be your client, naturally. That was Adrian Andrews. Be quiet and listen, Your Honor. Y yes, sir. Your client specified a place and time for you, isn't that right? Y yes. That was so they could film you. I had no idea. Mr. Wright. Why would my client do such a thing? I would like to know why. Why did Madame Guard film the crime scene? 
The reason why he did that is my ticket out of this whole mess. There's only one reason why your client would secretly film the, film the crime scene. They wanted to blackmail you. Your client once told me something very interesting. We were talking about you, and this is what they said. But I'm no weakling. I don't believe anyone. Least of all assassins. Oh, come now, Mr. Wright. Assassins aren't above blackmail. Yes, that's where the video comes in. With that, I can keep him at bay, and even blackmail him if I want. Your client didn't trust you at all. They were thinking of using this video to blackmail you. What do you have to say to that, Shelly the Killer? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh. It looks like... It looks like I was being deceived from the very beginning. Yes, by a natural. That is the kind of person they are. Your client is a person who only thinks and plots of how to use the people around them, to protect themselves from any and all dangers that may arise. That is the true nature of your client. I have one question for the witness. Yes. You've told us one thing numerous times during your testimony. You said that you detest traitors most of all. Yes, that's correct. But what if that traitor was your own client? What would you do then? That's obvious. I would break our contract in that case. And then... That client would become my next target. For the order of the Dekiller name, even if it takes an eternity, I would follow that person to the ends of the earth to exact my punishment. I see. That's all I wanted to know. So the traitor becomes the killer's next target. Ah, I get it. This is how we'll turn this case around. Mr. Wright. Yes? My contract with my client is over as of now. I seem to have a new job on my hands. I will now return to you your precious item. What the? I'm not an item. Maya, I thought I'd never see you again. Oh, thank goodness. Um, this trial appears to have come to its conclusion. However, I actually am sort of, I don't quite know what just happened there with the client and the witness and, Gwah! Miss Von Karma, where did that? She always has you in her sights. Now, I do believe it's time to finally hand down a verdict. Mr. Unguard. It looks like somehow, you got what you wanted. You'll finally receive the acquittal you wanted so badly. You should be happy. But before that, I would like to make one final statement. Sometime in the near future, one very betrayed assassin may appear before you. Needless to say, that man is very good at what he does. I'm sure you would understand what I mean if you watched this video. <laughs> Help me! Now then, Your Honor, the verdict if you please. Is this all right with you, Mr. Wright? We have finally reached the end of a very long battle. Whether he's convicted or acquitted, there's no escape for him now. Go on, Phoenix. Plead whichever way your heart tells you. Right, Chief. Well, I mean, Unguard is a horrible person. He has caused the death of multiple people at this point. And he's, he caused the kidnapping of Maya. And all around, he's just a general jackass, so let's plead guilty. Matt Unguard. <laughs> Even though I am a lawyer, I cannot make your crime disappear. 
think a guilty verdict is appropriate here. M me My wonderful self. Guilty? Even if you got an acquittal the instant you set foot outside the detention center, your life would be in danger. No matter which way you look at it. You can't run away from your crime anymore! As always, it looks like we have uncovered the real truth. We? I don't remember you helping out much in this. Mr. Edgeworth, how's Matt on guard? I've left Miss Von Karma in charge of his incarceration. I'm sure he's getting a full course meal of whip leather right about now. Very good. That was a close one, wasn't it, Witness? Yes. I plan to pay my debt to society for my own crime, Your Honor. This trial was the first time I had stood on the witness stand, and when I did, I really felt hopeless. She must be talking about the time Edgeworth really went after her. I guess she's trying to forgive him for what he did. This witness, how should I put this? She has an illness. If you are going to say you would choose death, that is of no concern to me. But, after that, when I was alone at the detention center, that's the first time I really saw myself and who I am. And today, when the two of you used your combined strength to convict Matt, I... I felt like I had finally been saved. Wow. This is the first time I've ever seen her smile. I am really happy that you two were in charge of this case. I really don't know how to express how I feel at this moment. This is... This is the first time I felt comfortable with myself. With who I am. Thank you so much, everyone. It looks like we have resolved everything at last. As for myself, there are still a few things I'm confused about. But everyone seems to be in good spirits, and that is good enough for me. That is all. This court is adjourned. You were great out there, Phoenix. What I did out there was right, wasn't it? This is the first time you've not gotten your client off. You got them a guilty verdict this time. But you have to look past all of that to what's really important. You now realize that there is something more than just getting a not guilty, right? Yes, I understand now. Phoenix, think back for a second. Think to the moments before Miss Von Karma arrived with the final pieces of evidence. Think about the incredible decision you had to make. Now then, Mr. Wright, let's hear the defense's final statements on this matter. I can't count on the evidence to help me anymore. I have to listen to my heart. Should I side with justice? Should I save Maya's life? My client, Mad on Guard, is... Is he guilty, or is he not guilty? Those were your choices then, and your answer. Your answer spoke to what being a lawyer means to you. Right! Edgeworth! I have good news. Maya is now safe in police custody. Really? B Pearls, you're telling the truth, right, Mr. Edgeworth? Y yes, she's quite safe. She's on her way here as we speak in the in a patrol car. Aha! Mystic Maya! Mystic Maya's safe! You did it! You really did it, Mr. Nick! Ow! She punches deceptively hard for a kid. I... I believed in you. I kept saying to myself, Mr. Nick will save her. Mr. Nick will save her. <laughs> uh, um, thanks. Oh! What's wrong? Miss Von Karma. Um... About earlier. Uh... Thanks. Ow! Why are you still smiling, Mr. Phoenix Wright? You... You lost! 
Your perfect win record has now been crushed. And yet, you are still happy. I don't think you'll ever understand, Miss Von Karma. How dare you! Don't worry. She may be she may in time. After all, I was like that myself until a year ago. It it's worth for my own personal victories and for guilty verdicts. I used every dirty trick in the book, and so my win record remained spotless. But a man appeared and stood fast against that selfish me. I fought him in my usual manner and tasted my first defeat. I felt like I had lost everything because of that. And then... It was my turn to sit in the defendant's chair. And I was saved by that person I called my enemy. I couldn't forgive myself for all that had happened. So I left the prosecutor's office. And I left that note. Prosecutor Miles Edgeworth chooses death. Hmm, <laughs> as well you should have. A prosecutor who has shamed himself with, a, with defeat should crawl into a hole and die. But that was not what happened. After I left the prosecutor's office, I finally came to realize something. And it was in that moment of clarity that everything began to change. That's foolish nonsense. We prosecutors use anything we can to attack the defendant. But every time we did so... No matter how desperate the situation, instead of giving up like most people, that man would hold strong with his undying faith. And then, before I knew it, I began to trust in that man as well. Th what? You trusted your enemy? It doesn't matter how many underhanded tricks a person uses. The truth will always find a way to make itself known. The only thing we can do is fight with the knowledge we hold it and everything we have. Erasing the paradoxes one by one. It's never easy. We claw and scratch for every inch. But we will always eventually reach that one single truth. This, I promise you. The truth! Yes, that's the reason why prosecutors and defense lawyers exist. But I'm sure you already knew that, didn't you, right? That's why you couldn't forgive me. This man who went into hiding. Isn't that right? This man who only had his sights set on victory. Who ran away into the night. Ah! Is... Is Mr. Edgeworth right, Mr. Nick? You really let me down. When you disappeared, I felt... Betrayed. The reason I decided to become a lawyer to begin with... It was because I believed in the things you said to me. All those years ago. And you... You betrayed your own words. That's why... One year ago... I made up my mind. I decided that the Miles Edgeworth I knew had died. At least... That's what I told myself. You pathetic fool! Miss Von Karma! I don't want to hear the wretched whimpering of a disgraced loser. If Von Karma is someone who is destined to be perfect. Miles Edgeworth, you are no longer worthy. You are no longer worthy of being a Von Karma. And neither am I. It's over. It's all over. Francisca threw something on the ground just now. This is an electromagnetic receiver. Isn't that the thing she used to track Detective Gumshoe? I'll return this to the precinct later. There's something else. Ah! Isn't that Miss Von Karma's whip? I'll never set foot in another courtroom again. I'm sure that's what she's tr saying by this action. You should keep this right. Um... Okay. Nick! <laughs> Maya! Mystic Maya! Mystic Maya!
Oh, Nick, I knew you would come through. You got on guard convicted like I knew you would. And on top of that, you even rescued me. Of course I did. You know I, you know I would never desert you. But we sure pressed our luck this trial. You're really lucky to be standing here. Whatever, whatever. Look, it's over, okay? Besides, if I did croak, I would just come back and haunt you like a bad ghost through Pearly. Is it really that easy to do something like that? Thanks a lot, Nick. Um, don't mention it. Maya. Oh, Mr. Edgeworth. Um, I'm relieved you're all right. Hey, it looks like you've made some real progress, Mr. Edgeworth. Um, well, I suppose I'm a little different from who I was a year ago. Heh. <laughs> Oh god, my stomach also growled just as that happened. <laughs> Alright, I think it's time we got out of this depressing place. Huh? Where are we going? Food, Nick! Food! Grub! Chow! I'm starved. I'm so hungry, even you look like a nice juicy burger on a bun to me, Nick. Y you think I look like a burger? I'm a prime rib, at least. Come with us, Mr. Edgeworth. Please! Uh, um... If you insist... Alright, so how about we hit up the usual burger joint? Don't be silly, Nick. Huh? This case messed up that awesome evening and got in the way of my gourmet food. So I've decided that we have to make up for it by having another feast. Uh, another feast? Come on, Nick. Food! Hey, pal. Sorry to keep you waiting. Gumshoe, are you alright? Yeah, but I'm really embarrassed. I didn't think I would hit a telephone pole of all things. A telephone pole? Then wasn't a red Then it wasn't a red light that got him? You did it again, Sadie boy. I feel like my dear old heart was gonna give out on me, and I ain't joking. Yeah, it was more exciting than the very last episode of the Steel Samurai. Thanks. Now look here, Mr. Snooty Prosecutor, don't you reckon you bully Mr. Rat too hard? If you don't start being a lot nice to him, he might just kick it. Tonight, even. Uh, um, I'll keep that in mind. Well, come on now. Everyone, gather around. Y'all are gonna get your picture taken by a genuine professional photographer. Looks like Lotta brought herself a new camera. Well, pal, at least we can put this messy case behind us now. Come on, tonight's all about eating, so let's go chow down, pal. Amen to that, pal. Amen. You know, when you think about it, you were the one who saved the day, Detective. The? Uh, me? Do you really think so? He's right. If it wasn't for the three items you took, I think the trial would have been very different- would have had a very different ending. Uh, well, you know, it's- <laughs> Huh? Wait. That's odd. What I read off with the things from To Kill His Hideout. I was sure I took four things total, sir. What? Four? Yeah, I'm sure I put one of the items in my coat pocket. There's a fourth item? Ah, come on, y'all, it's over. But oh boy, I tell you, you really are something else. Between getting accused of the murder and getting kidnapped, never dull moment with you, huh? <laughs> you think? Why does she look so happy about that? But being shut away for two whole days, weren't you scared? Yeah, it was really scary. I felt so hopeless. So to keep my mind off of things, I drew a picture. Sounds like you had it rough, gal. So where is this picture of yours? Yeah, I want to see it. I want to see Mr. Kamaya's picture. Hmm. You know, I don't know where it went. Aw, that's too bad. Well, it's alright. It wasn't anything important anyway. Ah. Uh, sure is nice to finally see them both smiling again. Hmm? What is it, Edgeworth? This thing is picking up something. This thing is picking something up. Ah, uh, that's. It's Miss Von Karma's receiver. Ugh, thanks to her, I had the most awful experience of my life, sir. I can't believe she stuck a tracking device on me. That's odd. 
Even though you're standing right here, the tracking device seems to be in a different location. Oh, it's probably busted or something, so... Well, it doesn't matter. I'm afraid it's about time for me to excuse myself. I still have some work to do. Huh? But Mr. Edgeworth, you haven't even eaten anything yet. And you've eaten way too much, you glutton. I had fun tonight. Now, if you'll excuse me. Wait. What? I just want to say... Thanks, Edgeworth. You really saved me. Hmm. <laughs> if anyone should be saying thanks, it should be me, right? I feel like words alone aren't enough, to, aren't enough here. I wonder if there's anything I can give him to express how I feel. What's this? Thank you. It's all thanks to you two. You... and her. You don't need- you don't need to thank me. I was only doing my job. It looks like Mr. Edgeworth has left, Mr. Nick. Hey, Mystic Maya. Hmm? Yes, Pearly? I guess you two could go back to being lovey-dovey, right? You and Mr. Nick, I mean. But Pearly, would you cut it out already? You're embarrassing me. Uh, anyway. So who's paying for this lovely dinner party? As if you need to ask. Everyone say thank you to Nick. Huh? Uh, yeah. I'm good at the point where I can't even buy instant noodles, pal. So I kinda already put your name on the bill. Huh? Huh? Yeah, I got me a situation just like that myself. There's this camera shop in this hotel, see? And I just bought myself this good old beauty here. It'd be better anyhow for $3,000. Huh? 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 Actually, I reckon you bought it for me j since it's on your tab and all. Huh? 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 Isn't this great, Mr. Nick? Yeah, Nick. Why do I suddenly feel like screaming? Aw, oh, you don't need to hold back now, you hear? Yep, yeah, Bill. Time to let it all out. This is going to be the first time I hear the real you. Go on. It's been a while since I heard you say it. I've been busy being a hostage and all. Alright then. If you say so. Objection! You really came through for me, Nick. I had to hide that letter, but I knew you'd find it. I really feel like I've been living on the edge lately. I mean, I've escaped death three times now. Pretty cool, huh? I feel like a pro. I'm so happy you could save Mystic Maya, Mr. Nick. And I'm so happy for the two of you. Speaking of, I think this hotel is a popular place for honeymooners. So I sort of... made reservations for the two of you, just in case. Well, pal, it looks like I'm back on the force again. Mr. Edgeworth had a long talk with the Chief, and he got me reinstated for my sake. I heard he said things like, letting that one go is bad for all of society. I knew it! Crashing headlong into everything is the only way to live, pal. I, Maggie Bird, am retiring this uniform as of today, sir. I'm going to be a waitress from now on. And bring smiles and joy to the people who come by the restaurant, sir. I hope you'll stop by sometime, Mr. Wright. Hmm, yes, are you here to visit a patient? Hmm, I'm Director Hottie. <laughs> Recently, hmm, yes, that girl, you know, I haven't seen her around, hmm, yes. But I remember, if I even laid so much as an eye on her, it would go crack. Hmm. It didn't matter if I got wit, though. Hmm. Hmm, yes. Ho oh, ho ho.
It's time to begin our quest of world circus domination, sweetie. And to let the world know we are serious, I plan to make a fabulous flight to Zimbabwe. Hey, Max. What do you think Zimbabwe is like? Do you think there are castles made of cake and bunnies who can talk? I think if there are any talking bunnies, even they won't laugh at Moe's jokes. I'm ready, I'm ready. There's no way these jokes are gonna fall on deaf ears. I'm gonna be more contemporary with my humor. Mo curls re re represent We've got a new act all worked out. Prepare for the Hallelujah Chorus. Say something, will ya? You're supposed to start this off. Get on with it. What's this? Drat, it's just an ordinary electric razor recharging on a stand. I can't believe this, really. How long do they plan on making me do this? Ah, but it's Edgy Poo's idea, so that means it must have a deep hidden meaning. But, why do I get the feeling they wouldn't forget about me, would they? Ah, it was never like this in the old days. Everyone thought the world of me. They used to call me Queen Wendy and treat me like royalty, and any man who hasn't heard about this is going to fill up into my heel. Yes, they're going to fill the world bird. And speaking of bird, the fi I appreciate everything you and Mr. Edgeworth did for me from the bottom of my heart. Oh, that's right. I received a letter from Miss Von Karma. She said that after I get out, I should feel free to consult her about anything at all. I'm really thankful to have met everyone. It has become difficult for me in this country as of late. As such, I will take a short leave of absence. If you would like to request my services, please be sure to visit my homepage. May we both be blessed with longevity. Where are you going, Francisca? How did you know I was here? With this? That's... I heard you were planting things on a certain person. Things like tracking devices in his coat, for example. Hm. That's just like you. I only planted it there because he was always wearing it. This filthy drab coat of his... I don't know how it ended up in my luggage. But it's going into the trash, I promise you that. Oh, that's right. Speaking of that man, he told me something very interesting. When I ran off with the things from Tequila's hideout, I was sure it took four things in total, sir. Four items? It seems he put the last one in his coat pocket. He put it in here? It doesn't matter anymore. The case is already over. What are you going to do now? That's none of your business. Are you running away? Shut up! You don't understand a thing. You can't possibly understand what it means to be a man- to be Manfred von Karma's daughter. Francisca. So many expectations from everyone around me. Expectations I must fulfill. I'm expected to win no matter what. And failure? Such a thing is not an option for me. My father was a genius. There's no doubt about that. But to me, I'm not genius. I've always known that. But I... I had to be one. I had to. You may not be a genius like your father, but... You are a prosecutor. You have been and always will be. No, I'm not. 
Not anymore. I've even thrown my whip away. Speaking of that, Wright gave me this to hold on to. Right. You knew something like this would happen, didn't you? I'm going to say this again. We prosecutors do not fight for personal honor or pride. I hope you'll think deeply about what you should be striking down with that VIP. You haven't changed a bit. You've always... You've always left me alone and fucked on ahead without me. Miles Edgeverse, I've always hated you. And then, finally, my chance to take my revenge on you arrived. If I could win against that man, if I could make Phoenix right bow down in defeat, then this girl you left behind would have risen higher than you. That was supposed to be my revenge. I see. You know, I can't do it. I can't change who I am. I can't throw away everything I've been until today. I believe you can. Just like how Adrian Andrews did. Adrian Andrews? You were going to use her during the trial, right? But you... You were dependent on your father by using his tactics. Isn't that right? <laughs> Today, you chased after me. After I'd left you behind all these years. And that's why we're standing here now. Side by side. But... I have no intention of stopping you. If you say you are going to quit your walk down the prosecutor's path, then this is where we part ways, Francisca von Karma. I... I... I am a Francisca von Karma. Don't think I'm going to walk in your shadow forever. Our battle begins now, so you'd better prepare yourself, Miles Edgeworth.